Traveling to new places is fun. You get to see new cultures, try tasty food, and just get a break from the routine of everyday life in general. You take your camera and go to see the beautiful sights of your destination, but you cannot seem to do anything spontaneous at all and have to book your sights far in advance. And once you get to your destination, instead of this, you get this. And instead of this, you get this. Welcome the phenomenon of overtourism. Overtourism can be defined as an excessive number of tourists at a specific destination that can result in negative impacts of all types on the community involved. These impacts may include, but is not limited to issues such as a price increase of housing, which is the case in several cities where the introduction of shared economy platforms accommodating short-term visitors have driven up prices to such an extent that some households cannot afford to buy properties and new homes anymore. While such a price increase is presumably modest in a city of 10 million, there are fears that this can have a local impact through the process of gentrification, changing the characteristics of distinct and internationally recognized neighborhoods. In some places, particularly outside the largest megacities where tourists usually keep to certain small parts of the city such as Times Square, residents may experience the presence of sightseers negatively. To some, this can mean inconveniences such as competing for parking spaces or experiencing litter and noise. In some cities, for example Barcelona, some locals have found tourists annoying and intrusive to such an extent that they protest them in the streets. In other Mediterranean cities, giant cruise ships resembling floating towns pollute the ports they are docked to. The number of tourists has been growing steadily since the financial crisis in 2009, and if it wasn't due to a particular virus that shares its name with a Mexican beer, that increase of overseas tourism would have increased further. What is it that drives the surge of tourists? There are a number of factors behind the surge in tourism. A recurring theme on this channel is globalization, which is an important element in funneling people to famous, Instagrammable spots. With every improvement of transportation, be it opening of high-speed train lines or improved fuel efficiency of aircraft, more and more people can travel between two given points in a faster manner. Lately, so-called ultra-long-haul flights have set record after record in distances flown, the latest being Singapore Airlines' Changi Newark route a distance of over 15,300 kilometers, and this feat is already being challenged by other airlines. The technological advancements in the air industry have altered the mobility patterns of flyers. Improved fuel efficiency and increased reach of modern airplanes may result in a reduction of stopovers, enabling quicker access between starting point and destination for millions of passengers. This development is also having effects on shorter trips where smaller fuel-efficient aircraft make it feasible to operate on low-demand routes. Thus, people can travel from places with smaller airports to tourist destinations without having to change flights at a hub. This further shrinks the planet, enabling international and intercontinental journeys for more people and in a lesser amount of time. Such travel is usually not cheap, but more people can afford it today. The global middle class is growing, and more and more people can afford, aside from cars and housing, trips to other places. This phenomenon has a particular presence in emerging and growing economies, whereas for developed countries, an increasing part of the populations are entering the wealthier portion of the income pool. While international traveling can set you back several hundreds or even thousands of dollars, airfare prices, which oftentimes make up a huge portion of the total price of a vacation trip, have dropped significantly following the introduction of low-cost carriers such as Ryanair in Europe and Southwest Airlines in the US. Sometimes the trip to the airport itself can cost more than the flight you're headed for. It costs approximately 75 Danish crowns, the equivalence of 11 US dollars, to fly from Copenhagen Airport to London Stansted. Meanwhile, the 20-minute train ride from adjacent Malmo costs around $12. Such airfares, both low-cost and traditional full-service airlines, are also much more easily attainable compared to a decade ago. Previously, a trip could entail preparations such as visiting a travel agent, whereas today it can all be done at the touch of some keys on people's phones and computers. The improved accessibility does not only entail fewer barriers to book a trip, but has also made an impact in the form of shared economy platforms such as Airbnb, opening up for higher competition and a bigger choice for tourists to find accommodation. So, what should be done in order to mitigate the negative aspects of tourism? Limiting the number of visitors is one way, but except for shutting out the positive things that sightseers bring around, such as their money, it can in practice be hard to do. 
Oftentimes, the municipalities that suffer from over-tourism do not have control over the airports or national roads that people come through. There are other measures to be taken. In Copenhagen, the city has started to promote other parts of the city in order to give tourists an alternative to the old historic center. In Santorini, plans are underway to cap the number of cruise ships docking to the small Greek island. We are yet to see what these measures will lead to, but one thing is for certain, and that is that people will keep traveling. The coronavirus may have halted the exponential growth in overseas travel, but when the dust settles, the factors mentioned will most likely still persist. If national and local authorities cannot curb tourism, then at least every individual can work in order to make everybody stay pleasant. Remember that whenever you go to popular and crowded destinations, technically, you're part of the problem. So make sure to not litter and to give up that last parking space to a local. Thank you all for listening to yet another episode of Global Outlooks. If you have any ideas of topics I can talk about, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe in order to not miss future videos. Until next time.